Hey guys, it's Loves to Loom here, and today I'm going to be showing you my own original Bam Bam bracelet. This takes about 175 bands or so to create. This is actually a variation of my hidden rainbow bra bracelet, which I did upload recently. Now, the uh, bracelets in my left hand are the original Bam Bam, and you can see there's a single chain running up the center. I did notice if you do it without that single chain, which is the two right bracelets, it makes the bracelet pop up more in the center, and it is a lot skinnier. Now, you do have to stretch the bracelet when it comes off to get it to lay flatter like the left side, um, but they are two different options you can do. I'm going to do it with the single chain, so like these two today, but as I'm doing it, I'll let you know how to do it if you want it to come out this way instead. So there are your options. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. To make this bracelet, you do need at least one loom. I'll be using two just to avoid an extension. Um, also, you want to have them in the normal stagger position like so. You'll need one C-clip and your hook as well. So we're going to lay our border bands first. So the white on this one. I'm going to use orange, opaque orange today. So we'll grab our first band, lay it here on the very first pin for when we close it up. And we will lay our border bands out to the left and the right and then we'll go up the sides we're going to do this on both sides of course I do take this all the way to the end of the loom and then I bring it in once I get one shy of the end. So I'm one shy of the end, I'm going to bring it into the center. Whoops, like so, and we'll do the same thing on the left side. Let's take it all the way down. So for those of you who have seen my last upload of the Hidden Rainbow, you're going to notice that the laying and looping are almost identical, very similar. And then the same goes for my Fiddle Diddle, which I have not filmed yet, but they are all three very, very, very similar. Alrighty, so I did go ahead and leave my last band there, so it should look like this with just your border bands. You can definitely take a moment to push those down. So now it's going to depend on which bracelet you want to make. If you want to make the original on my right hand, we are going to now lay a single chain up the center. If you do not want to make this one and you want it without the single chain, then you're going to want to fast forward to the next steps. So for those of you making the original, we're now going to lay a single chain up the center. I personally liked how the clear looked um, because it doesn't pop out. I don't really want you to see the single chain so much um, but it just gives it a little bit of a different effect. That's why I like using it. It's so slippery.
Okay. So you take it all the way down to the end like so. And now we'll come back to the beginning. Okay, so this is where everyone should be back on track doing the same thing no matter which version you're doing. The only difference was that single chain. Okay, so everyone should now lay, we're going to be laying double bands all the way up and we're going to be laying horizontal bands. So take two, stretch them across this pin and across that pin like so. So I forgot to mention this before I laid these, so I am actually going to edit this into the video and let you know that the horizontal bands that we're laying now are actually going to be the bands that are all my rainbow colors. Try to so make sure they're not all twisted. The straighter they are, the neater your bracelet's going to look in the end. So double bands, stretch them horizontally across like so. For these bands that we're laying right now, I would not recommend a super, uh, like, twisty kind of band. If it gets twisted up easily, it's probably going to maybe look a little messy. I haven't tried it. I'm just assuming based on how the looping goes for this. It's just my recommendation. I use the pigs a lot though. You probably noticed that. <laughs> I just they're easy to work with, especially on camera. Oops. Getting closer to the end. Two more pins, and we're done. Well, done this part. Voila. Okay, so this is what your loom should look like now. I would definitely recommend pushing these double bands down because we do have one more layer we're going to lay. So once you have that completed, we are going to now lay the bands that are black on this bracelet here. I'm going to be using white, and we're going to be laying them in the shape of a V. Now we do not need to lay one on the very first row down here. We're going to come up to this center pin here, the second one, and just go out to the left and the right, like so. And we'll do that all the way up. Just making that V shape. This is strange only using one loom. It's been like a long time, besides my hidden rainbow, it's been a long time since I've only messed around with one loom designs. But it's nice, they're quick, easy, I think, in my opinion.
Okay. So that is my last set of bands. As I Once you have them all pushed down, you're going to turn your loom around to the arrows that are facing you. And what we're going to do is start by looping the horizontal bands that are wrapping this way. So that would be my burgundy brown in there. We're going to reach down in the center here and you're going to grab the top two double bands and you're going to be just pulling them down like that. Come up to the next section, go in the middle here, grabbing the top two part of those horizontal bands and we're going to stretch them down. We're going to do that all the way up. Make sure you're grabbing both bands because you should have double bands in there for those horizontal bands. And you're just pulling them down to the pin in front. It's very simple. I would try to keep them as straight and untwisted as you can. Keeping things looking nice and neat. I did not have you put a cat band on the front pin yet on purpose. I didn't forget to do that. That is something that we will do later on just to let you know. Make sure you do the very top one also, like so. There's a train going by. I'm so sorry if you hear that. <laughs> okay, so come back down to the beginning once you have completed that. And you don't have to actually push any bands down. Just be careful. I mean, you can, but just be careful if you don't. Okay, so for this next part, it is going to differ slightly depending on which version you did. If you did the single chain, you're going to follow me, and we're going to start looping. We're going to do it step by step. We're going to loop the single chain forward, and then we're going to loop the bands that are in an upside down V. We're going to loop them down. If you did not lay the single chain, you're just going to bring all of these white bands, your upside down Vs, you're just going to loop them back to themselves on each one. So for those of you who have the single chain, we're going to go in the center pin. We're going to grab the single band, you're going to bring it forward, like so. And I know it's hard to see because mine's clear. Then we're going to now go into that pin, push back the top layers, and you got to be careful because there's like, it's kind of tight in here. Push back, grab your band that is laying like that, and bring it back to itself, and do the same thing for the right one. Bring it back to itself, like so. Then we're going to go in that pin again, grab that bottom single chain band, bring it forward. And we'll do it again. We'll bring these white bands back to themselves. So push back the two double bands here, grab that band, bring it back to itself. So the only difference is, if you didn't lay that single chain, then you're just lay looping your white bands. You're not looping that single chain forward. If that's twisted, it's okay, but I recommend trying to keep them as straight as you can, but we can always fix that later. So then if you have your single chain, go in, loop that up, and then we'll loop these back to themselves again. Like so, and we'll continue doing that. So I'll loop my single chain forward. And now I'll loop my whites back to themselves. So it is actually very easy. Just 
just be careful when you're pushing back these double bands that you don't pop them off. And there is a lot of tension, so you got to really push them out of the way when you're grabbing that other band. So you're going to keep doing that all the way up until you reach the top. I'm going to go ahead and get mine completed. Let me just show you what it should be looking like. So go ahead and get that completed, and then I'll come back and show you what we are going to do next. Okay, so once you have that completed, we're going to come back to the beginning. And we're not going to loop our border yet. We have one more step to do. We're going to go back to the double bands that we laid, which are my burgundy brown. You can see them from this side here. These bands in here, the double bands in the center, we're going to be lifting them up and over on both sides. So we'll start on our first pegs on the side. I'm just going to go up my left side and then I'll go up my right side. So stick your pin, pin no, hook in the pin, grab those two bands, and you're going to bring them up and over like so. Two bands, bring it up and over. Same thing. Make sure you get both of them, bring them up and over. So again, we're going to do that all the way up. The neater they lay, the nicer it will look. It's kind of hard on some of them to keep them straight, but you can stick your hook and kind of grab them and go like this to try to straighten that out. Or you can wait until you take it off of the loom and clean it up then. So yeah, we're going to do this all the way up like so. I feel like I just said that like four times. Now I'm twisting all of them because I'm rushing. And the very top one, there's nothing that you can loop that one onto. So unfortunately, we're just going to leave that not looped on the very top. So then we'll come back and do the same thing on the right side. The right side's a lot looser pulling it up because the left side's already released, you will notice. Ah. Uh, I'm just a mess tonight, aren't I?
All right. So I have all of mine looped up and over. I don't think I skipped any. Make sure you didn't skip any. And your loom should be looking like this now. And like I said, I would go through and just try to see if any of them are twisted. You can just kind of fiddle with it with your hook. Stretch it out a little. Try to get it to lay a little neater. And then now all we need to do is loop our border. So we do actually want to add a cap band on down here. I know we have this band here that could act as a cap band, but it's loose. Um, so I like to add another cap band on top of that. So grab whatever color you used for your border. Or you can actually use whatever color this brown one or that band is there. Doesn't really matter. So I'm just using a regular cap band. And now I'm going to go in and we'll loop our borders up. So back to itself to the right, back to itself to the left. And we will go up the sides. Make sure you push back any bands that are in your way, such as these two whites. Grab your bottom, bring it forward. Like so. The border is very simple, easy, basic, nothing special to it. So I'm sure everyone can do this without any problem. Especially with all the complex designs out there. This is nothing. I usually always, always loop my left side first. And for some reason I did my right side. Isn't that funny? I don't think I've ever started on the right side. It's funny. What's funny to me? I don't know. I'm tired. <laughs> and I'm rambling. Alrighty, so come to the left side or opposite side than what you've already done. And repeat the process. So just to save on a couple minutes here, I'm going to go ahead and get my border looped up. And I will meet you back here at the top. So once you do reach the top, you're going to grab the bottom band we laid here at the top for closing it. Push back anything on the top, grab the very bottom band. Bring those two together, and that is what we will attach our C-clip on to, if I can find it. There it is. Oops. Put that around everything, didn't I? Yes, I did. Okay. There we go. Now, one thing that is very important is you want to go pin by pin to remove this. You do not want to grab and pull up because it distorts everything and you're going to have to do a lot more fiddling with it. So please take a moment, release everything with your hook on the side, and then we can just pull up on the middle and take it off. I know usually with one loom designs, it's easy to just pull up on, but trust me, don't do it. Okay, so I have it off of the loom. This is what it looks like before I touched anything. So if you do not have the single chain in the middle, um, your bracelet may be popping up a little bit more already. But for the ones with the single chain in the middle, I like to do this first and stretch it out to the left and the right. This one actually came out pretty good. But this is what I do for the flatter look. Just stretch it like that. Stretch it long ways, which is what I always do. And I am noticing that some of my border bands are like tucked in a little more. They're not so evenly laid, so pop them out to clean it up. Do that all the way down. Oops. 
Now, one thing you can do, whether you have the single chain or not, even if you have this one and you don't want it to lay as flat, if you squeeze both sides and kind of pinch them together and pull like that, both bracelets are going to pop that middle up more. Um, the one without the single chain in the center is going to pop up a lot more than this one, but they both pop up pretty cool or nicely like that. And I like that look because it just lays really cool, but it does bend the back side in. So to, so to close it up, you're just going to locate the cap band. You may need to pull it out a little bit and connect the C-clip to your cap band at the end there like that. And there you have my completed Bam Bam bracelet. So I certainly hope you guys like this bracelet, either version. And if you do like it, I would appreciate if you could hit that like button down below. And also find me on Instagram at Love Saloon. Tag me. I'd love to see your rendition of it. So I do appreciate you guys watching another video. And I will be back soon with my next tutorial. Thanks, guys. Bye.